Hi, this is Ellis, and this is day nine of 40 Days and 40 Plants. Today's plant is a kind of Echeveria. Um, I tried looking it up because I got this originally from somewhere where they didn't actually put a label on it. So it's a kind of Echeveria hybrid, and that's about as far as I can say. But the hybrid is usually called Ruffles because it has these ruffled um, leaves. So that's what it's called. And pardon the outside noise. Hopefully it's not going to be too distracting to the video. So let's start with the collect. Lord Christ, our eternal Redeemer, grant us such fellowship in your sufferings that, filled with your Holy Spirit, we may subdue the flesh to the Spirit, and the Spirit to you, and at last attain to the glory of your resurrection, who lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A very interesting wording for the collect, but I can go on a whole tangent on that. Okay, so today's readings uh, for me kind of go into two parts. One of them is talking about um, what the sin look like. Um, so we have like an Old Testament example, um, and the psalm is talking a bit more about you know feeling really sinful and and really coming to repentance. So in the gospel, it's, um, it shows kind of the extremes of sin as well, um, kind of saying that um, even hatred can, um, can basically be like murdering somebody. And so there's that part of the gospel. And then the other part of um, the readings, actually, is forgiveness. And so the gospel also talks about, um, you know, make sure to really... Um, Make sure that you forgive and that you be forgiven. Make sure you apologize and um, come to terms with, with other people who have either wronged you or people that you have wronged as well. Um, so that's, that's in the Gospel. But I wanted to focus today on the reading from Ezekiel. This is Ezekiel chapter 18 verses 21 through 28. If the wicked turn away from all their sins that they have committed and keep all my statutes, and do what is lawful and right, they shall surely live, they shall not die. None of the transgressions that they have committed shall be remembered against them. For the righteousness that they have done, they shall live. Have I any pleasure in the death of the wicked, says the Lord God, and not rather that they should turn from their ways and live? But when the righteous turn away from their righteousness and commit iniquity and do the same abominable things that the wicked do, shall they live? None of the righteous deeds that they have done shall be remembered, for the treachery of which they are guilty and the sin they have committed, they shall die. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is unfair. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? When the righteous turn away from their righteousness and commit iniquity, they shall die for it. For the iniquity that they have committed, they shall die. Again, when the wicked turn away from the wickedness they have committed and do what is lawful and right, they shall save their life. Because they considered and turned away from all the transgressions that they had committed, they shall surely live. They shall not die. So it's, there's a lot going on there, but the part that I really wanted to focus on was this idea that basically um, if you really do commit yourself to righteousness, if you really do commit yourself to um, changing your life and to really recognizing um, things that you may have done wrong or, or you're really trying to repent and really trying to change your ways, um, then you will be forgiven. And not only will you be forgiven, but all of your past will be forgotten. Um, and everything that you have done righteous, uh, righteously will carry on. And so that brings me um, to this plant, this Echeveria. So I don't have too much to share about this, um, except that it is a really pretty plant. Um, I just noticed today that it is quite underwatered, so um, I think it'll perk up a little bit more. But it has this nice little grayish blue color to it. Um, and when it gets a lot of sunlight, it actually gets these nice pink and reddish um, edges as well. And I guess I kind of wanted to point out the, the pot that it's in as well. I have it in this um, little Vietnamese um, pot that looks like a, like a gourd. Um, and uh, gourds and pumpkins are 
significant to um, East Asian cultures because in Chinese, the word for gourd actually sounds like the word for blessing. So first off, I wanted to say that this is, a, of course, a plant series and you can't really get away from plant series without there being some succulents and especially not having echeverias. But this echeveria is, um, has an important story for me right now, though. Um, so when I first got it, I actually planted it into an arrangement. And that arrangement um, thrives right now, except one of the plants died, and that was the echeveria. However, when it was dying, it put off a bunch of leaves um, that were still alive, because um, that's usually the way that a lot of these succulents die. Um, they usually die from the stem first, and then the leaves kind of live on uh, for a little bit. And if the leaves have the right kind of care, then they'll be able to come back. And that's what this is. This is a product of me actually grabbing one of the leaves and putting it into um, a tray for a while to grow roots, and then after they grew a new plant out of it. And it's grown quite a bit in the past few months, actually. Um, this is quite large uh, compared to what it was when it first started. And so for me, that kind of means that this plant has kind of forgiven me for uh, mistreating it when I first got it. You know, it's it now it's growing a lot better. Um, it's a lot happier on its own. And it's growing a lot right now. And for me, we basically forgot the fact that it came from a parent plant that I tried to stuff into an arrangement. And instead now we're in this new relationship where basically the plant is growing, it's really happy. And that's the way that I look at forgiveness as well with God. A lot of times we might um, do a lot of wrong in our lives, but God always forgives us. And God remembers all of the good that we have done. And the good is the stuff that really kind of comes out in our own lives as well. It's the things that people usually remember us for. And it's the thing that will basically live on past all of our faults. So as long as we ask for forgiveness, as long as we really do ask for forgiveness, not only from God, but from, from everybody else as well, from our neighbors, from our friends, from our families, even from our enemies, then we'll be able to um, have our righteousness live on, just as this plant lives on after an error that I've committed.